All right, welcome to episode number 10. Can you believe it, guys? This is episode number 10 of TFL Talking Trucks. Woohoo! Um, and today we are talking about the top, get this, eight trucks we are most looking forward to actually debuting, driving, seeing, smelling, <laughs> towing, you know, the new trucks that are coming out, let's say in the next year or so, uh, that we're really looking forward to featuring. And in this uh, video and podcast, uh, we're going to be talking about everything we know about those trucks. So if you guys are super excited about new product, uh, this is it. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks, or big full-size SUVs. If you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. So boys, let's get right to it. Uh, number eight has got to be, Andre, the Ford F-150. Yeah, it's a 2021. We've been seeing those prototypes running around for years. I remember Nathan and I and some of us together uh, we were in the mountains in Colorado. We saw the prototypes. Then they shed some camouflage. <laughs> they became a little bit more production worthy. Um, and then, of course, the virus hit, right? And now we're still sitting here wondering when it's coming, but it's coming this year. Yeah, Steve, well, you know, the number one for the most part selling trucks, and I say that because there was a moment in time when GM has actually outsold Ford, but let's, let's just go with Ford's PR, the number one selling truck in America for the last forever. Yeah. Uh, and there's a new version of it coming, but you and me both know that um, when a truck is very popular, the changes are always evolutionary, never revolutionary. Absolutely. I think that's true. And I think based on the spy photos we've seen, the thing that's jumped out at me is the interior on that new F-150. Uh, they're going big screen. I think they're following Ram there. Uh, and it looks really luxurious. It looks like they're really pumping up the luxury and tech inside of that truck, at least based on what I've seen. Um, but I, although I will say, I think Ford has demonstrated they're the one manufacturer that is willing to take some risks. Although I doubt with this uh, update, they're going to take any risks. I, I think you're right about that. It'll be very uh, evolutionary. Yeah, I mean, looking at the spy shots, you can definitely tell it's uh, an F-150, right? There's no doubt that they didn't, they didn't like go all... Uh, you know, Hummer on it, right? No, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to get to that one in a second. That's why yeah. I said it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's definitely F-150. Andre, what are some of the hard numbers that we know? Well, we know uh, many leaked information or information that came either from like the VIN decoding or uh, dealership order guides or other sources. Um, Ford has not kind of officially said anything other than uh, they delayed their debut event right uh, but what we know what we know is sort of the power plant list or the selection of power plants that the truck should have we know that the five liter coyote stays uh, according to leaked information which is a great news for all of us v8 lovers uh, we know that ecoboost engines remain so the 2.7 turbo twin turbo and the 3.5 twin turbo remain and there's a hybrid coming so this hybrid is supposed to be 3.5 liter EcoBoost with an electric system uh, built, built into it. Uh, we don't know a lot about it, but recently uh, one of the Ford PR managers uh, said that the system is gonna be similar in sort of interworkings to the new Ford Explorer. So the 10 speed automatic should be there and you know, a smaller battery should be there as well. Yeah, Steve, let's talk about the, the hybrid. I don't think it's going to be like Ram's e-torque, right? That's just a mild hybrid. That's a 48-volt system that, as far as we can tell, doesn't do much. <laughs> Except yeah, for stop I, start. I was worried that Ford might go the e-torque route, but you know, it definitely sounds like this is a much more uh, legitimate hybrid. And uh, it's, it's exciting. I mean, we've had hybrid pickups in the past, but nothing that's ever really shaken up the market, I would say. Nothing that's really moved the needle. And if, uh, if one company has a chance to do that with a hybrid, I'd say it's Ford. So it's certainly exciting to see them uh, going that direction. Yeah, I mean, remember 10 years ago, GM came out with their hybrid and they actually yeah. put it uh, in a bunch of different applications. And it was always a head scratcher because you were like, uh, what's, why do you have this? It, it doesn't give you better fuel economy. It doesn't give you more towing. All it gives you are these big orange cables that run throughout the engine that seem to do nothing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of people reported a one mile per gallon, uh, you know, difference with the hybrid. It's like whoopee and you're paying a bunch of money for it. It was mostly just to tell your friends you bought a hybrid, I think. 
Yeah, and they did have these big hybrid badges on the side, of if I remember course. right, just right. so people knew that you were you were a trucker and you were green. <laughs> but but um, do you guys think that, you know, with uh, what's happened in the world over the last two months, that people are going to, I was just reading a story basically saying that, that people are going to go much more green, right? Because they're seeing what our environment looks like, and I'm looking out the window, uh, now that there isn't as much pollution out there. I, I think that's going to actually speed up the adoption of hybrids and electric vehicles. And, you know, Ford has rumored to also have an electric truck coming, right? They've partnered with uh, Rivian. Um, so what's your call, Andrew? Do you think we're going to see a faster kind of rush toward hybrids and electric trucks? I was hopeful, but not so much right now. And the reason why my uh, optimism is going down a little bit is twofold, right? So the new hybrids, especially the F-150, I see that as being a premium offering. I don't see them rolling it out as a base truck. Um, I, I think uh, it costs money, right, to introduce that technology for the first time. Um, so it's not going to be a cheap truck. And I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to afford it right away. I think down the, you know, a couple of years down the road, maybe. Um, and also fuel is really cheap right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for the next few months, uh, you know, people might be buying that five liter Coyote, you know, and, and, then, and then looking at hybrids later. Yeah, and we, we've proven with our Tesla videos that um, electric trucks don't really do very well, both off-road or towing. At least the Tesla Model X doesn't do well. Maybe electric trucks will do well. We'll leave that for other trucks on our list. Let's go to number seven, Steve. Um, you know, about a month and a half ago, uh, GM put out this startling image of the new Hummer, right? And it was yeah. an all-electric uh, truck. Uh, and then we found out that we were supposed to go on, I believe, May 25th, right, Andre, was when we were supposed to go and actually watch the thing be unveiled. Uh, and because of, of course, COVID, none of that happened. And, and so last week, uh, they teased us with another image, which was kind of a drone's eye view of this truck running through the forest. Um, mm -hmm. So we know that GM is working on an electric Hummer. Um, is, is it smart move to call their truck a Hummer or not, Steve? It's, it's, a, it's a crazy move, man. I couldn't believe it when they did it. It's, uh, it's a gamble. I really do think it's a gamble. But I think the kind of the cleverness in it is that they're really flipping Hummer, you know, right on its ear. Hummer is going to go from being a brand that's known for being this huge, massive SUV that drinks tons of fuel to being an electric vehicle, right? They're really just totally changing the idea behind the brand. And I think that could work for them. They could kind of catch people's attention that way. Uh, and then, you know, beyond that, I love the fact that it's called a Hummer because that means it has to be good off-road. You know, they cannot build a Hummer that sucks off-road. And if they do, I will be mad and I'll call them out on it. But I'm excited for that thing because it's got to be good once we uh, get out there in the mud. All right, Andre, as an H2 owner, would yes. you be willing to trade in your H2 for an electric uh, truck? I, I think I would. Absolutely, I would. Once again, I don't know how affordable it will be. But you betcha, I'll be there, you know, as soon as they unveil it. And as soon as, you know, it'll be on TFL truck, TFL off-road, it'll be on every channel. Uh, because it's a risk-taking move, I agree with you guys. But I think we don't have a lot of risk-takers in the automotive world, you know, from the traditional automakers. So I, I, I want to applaud GM for actually doing this. And I think uh, with some of the other off-road trucks coming out, I think it's a smart move to actually get this going. And they, so they delayed the debut, but they're saying the production truck will still come to fruition at the end of 2021. So yeah, it should be like a 2022 model year. Um, and they haven't delayed production yet, which is, and we know that GM has the capacity to do this because remember uh, the Chevy Bolt EV, they only had about two years to get it to production. And they did it, and they did it full force. So um, I think they can do it. And if you're wondering about what we know about it, the answer is not much. I mean, they haven't released anything, right? They've just shown us the picture, which is uh, basically a very reminiscent Hummer-like chromey vehicle that uh, is supposed to be electric. So, you know, battery power, we don't know. Range, we don't know. Charge time, we don't know. MPGE, we don't know. We just don't. They did know release a lot. some crazy horsepower and torque numbers, but even those, like the torque number, is a little dubious. We need to find out more about it before we can say eleven thousand pound feet is a legit torque number. So, yeah, we yeah, need to so wait for the debut to really, you know, learn it, more. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll talk about it at the end of the show too with Rivian, right? Uh, but 
uh, now they're quoting grounded torque, which means uh, the torque coming from the electric motors multiplied by the gearing. So yes. whatever the gearing is in the, either in the differential or in the hubs, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, that's the torque number they're quoting, uh, which is like 11,500, right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe other manufacturers will go that way and well, soon F-150 will quote, you know, 10,000, you know, pound feet of torque. Well, wait, hold, hold, hold on, Andre. So what you're saying is we bought a new Subaru DL from 1978, which has a little boxer engine that puts out 68 horsepower. And if you gear that thing down enough, you could probably get to 10,000 foot pound of torque. Yes, and you could race that Hummer. <laughs> you might be going very slowly, but you might be able to do that. All right, well, let's keep going. Like I said, there isn't much we know about the Hummer, but there is a lot we know about the next truck, and I call it a truck with air quotes, right, because it's a lifestyle vehicle. It came out, it must be now, five years ago, we saw that thing being unveiled uh, in uh, Detroit at the Detroit Auto Show. It's, of course, yeah. the Hyundai Santa Cruz, uh, and... Uh, What's your call on that? Is that going to compete with other trucks, Steve, or is it going to be more of a Ridgeline competitor, or is it going to be, you know, echoing back to the old Subaru Brat days, I mean, the, Camino the, days? <laughs> the obvious competitor is the Ridgeline. Uh, Proportions-wise, it even kind of looks like a Ridgeline a bit. Um, and, and then, of course, I'm sure if you ask Hyundai, they're going to tell you it's going to compete with every other midsizer on the market. Um, obviously, the biggest difference and the big argument in this kind of, uh, you know, ongoing battle is body on frame versus unibody. This is going to be a unibody pickup. It won't be body on frame, just like the Ridgeline. It'll be unibody. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that there's a world that uh, totally has a use and a purpose for a unibody pickup. And uh, if Hyundai can do one thing better than I think Honda can, it's value. It's offer a whole bunch of value in a, in a pretty cool midsize pickup. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Santa Cruz, too, to see uh, what kind of packaging they really come up with. Now, Andre, we've seen uh, spy photos of it uh, running down the desert. It looks pretty good. But... The, the thing that I think for a lot of off-roaders separates the Ridgeline from the other mid-size trucks is the lack of uh, low transfer case, low speed transfer case. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if the yeah. Santa Cruz is going to have a low speed transfer case, but if I were a betting man, I'd bet no. I would agree. Uh, I mean, they have really clever all-wheel drive system um, in some of the other crossovers, SUVs. So I, th um, I think they will use that likely. Uh, but we've been teased for so long with the Santa Cruz guys. I remember, like yeah. you said, five years ago, it was in Detroit. It was exciting uh, at the time, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good name. And yeah. At, at this point, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, the good news is that just like yesterday, uh, there was another spy image of uh, the actual body with no chassis attached to it, but the actual four-door cab being transported in some shipping yard. Um, so... That's our best look into the future and to say that, you know, it's actually coming. It's actually real. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited, but I think it's going to be more of a Ridgeline competitor truck, uh, a little bit more kind of a city dweller, you know, a person who lives in the city who needs a little bit more yeah. utility in a their beach truck. truck. A beach truck, right? You throw your surfboard in the back or you yeah. take it to the garden center. Do we know what power plant we'll have, Andre? No, not really. We don't, we don't know a heck of a lot, but I think it will be kind of based on a Tucson, Santa Fe, you know, kind of power plants. So, and they have a few choices. So I, I think uh, it might be turbocharged, which should be pretty good, uh, gas turbocharged engine. Uh, but there's a lot of action in this space, and we'll be talking a little bit more about this. Um, the other item I wanted to bring up, which is newsworthy, is... Uh, FCA has just tr uh, renewed their trademark for the Dakota. Awesome. Remember, for, for months and years, we've been talking about the Dakota, but we don't know anything about it, really, uh, which way they're going to go, but it might be a crossover truck as well. Yeah, you know, the crazy thing about the Dakota was it was one of the few midsize trucks that actually had a V8, right? And so I think for any um, fan of V8, having a midsize truck that has a V8, uh, is a huge um, carrot uh, on the end of a sure. stick. Right, Steve? Yeah. And if there was one brand that was going to do it, you guys know it's FCA. I mean, <laughs> they love shoving V8s into everything they can. Uh, I, I kind of hope the Dakota will end up riding on the, the Gladiator platform. I mean, I don't know if that'll be the case, but uh, well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and speaking of the Gladiator, that's our next truck's number five one on our list. And of course, that is the Gladiator with the new Eco Diesel uh, that is in the Ram. Um, mm -hmm. And um, 
we've had that uh, diesel in the Wrangler. It was actually here like maybe three weeks ago. So we know a lot about it, Andre. So what are the numbers on the uh, diesel, at least in the Wrangler? Yeah, it's pretty huge, right? So they took the engine from the Ram 1500. It has different tuning, right? So it's not quite the same, but 260 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. Those are huge numbers. Um, and just, just as of like a week ago, Jeep and their official statement is still that it's coming by the end of the year. It's been delayed by the closures of the plant, uh, but as the plant comes online, and I believe it's May 18th now that they're restarting most of their plants um, after the virus shut down. Um, they will, you know, get that engine in there and it'll be a diesel powered mid-sized truck, which is really rare here in the U.S. Yeah, so Steve, you know this, but uh, when the Gladiator first came out, there was just a lot of excitement around it. People lined up to get the first edition. Uh, and then like a year later, it became a little bit less hot, right? It, it didn't do as well. Um, and it, it's definitely the most expensive truck in the midsize truck segment. And what oh, yeah. do you think will happen when they add, at least in the Wrangler, it's a $4,000 option, right, to add the diesel. What's going to happen when you add $4,000 to a, a truck that's already I would say at least 10, 15% above the competition in terms of a price point. Yeah, they got to be really careful with how expensive that truck is. I think you're absolutely right about that. Uh, I, I, you know, there was obviously pent up demand. Gladiator went away for so long. There was so many people just, you know, itching, I think, to, to go out and buy a Jeep pickup truck. But all those people have already bought their pickup trucks, so, which is what you're saying. So hopefully, I'm sure they're hoping this diesel will be the carrot that will get people to come and, and bite again but they got to be careful. It can't be too expensive. However, I have a pretty good hunch, and maybe, Andre, you'll probably agree with me here, that the Gladiator diesel will be the uh, midsizer with the best tow rating. I'd be surprised if it doesn't overtake that Colorado diesel, uh, and then they have a new claim to fame, right? Yeah, I, I think that's maybe likely. It's already, for a four-wheel drive uh, midsize truck, it's, the Gladiator already has the highest tow rating. Oh, true. Uh, which is pretty crazy. So they could push it further with this diesel and maybe go above 7,700 pounds of towing. Uh, gotcha. But I don't know. Colorado's at 7,500, right? So it's just behind, but Gladiator already pushed past. Yeah, uh, but the diesel, uh, but I don't think the Gladiator diesel is really should be looked as a towing truck. Yes, it can tow. It will tow um, and we'll be testing it. Uh, but I think um, it's more for range, you know, and more kind of offering people that capability and torque. And Roman, you drove the diesel off-road many times, the Wrangler. Um, yep. And from everything I can see is just the torque really helps. Yeah, it's kind, uh, of, a, truck. It's kind of a story of, uh, of two vehicles, right? I mean, if you guys are looking to, 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 to lift your Wrangler and put on big tires, uh, then what ends up happening with the Pentastar and the two liter is you end up running out of power. So you got to either supercharge or tu turbocharge the Pentastar. I don't know, maybe tune the, the two liter yeah, or uh, to get more po power. But with the, with the uh, diesel, you don't have that problem. It's got so much torque. The problem you do run into in the Wrangler quickly is payload. You guys know that. I mean, basically, I think it's got like an 800 some pound payload. So it's four friends and a fat dog and you're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and the diesel is probably going to be heavy, so yeah, they'll have to be careful for sure with it. But but yeah. maybe in the truck, the payload won't be an issue because the truck has a lot more payload. Yeah, fair. Well, let's hope so because uh, some of these off-road trucks, especially you know specialty ones like the Gladiator, Rubicon, and the rest of it, they they're not known for payload. <laughs> they're they're known for crawling and being really good off-road, but carrying a lot of weight is not their forte. Um, but Roman, you said that they're not doing too well in sales, but they still sold about 40,000 trucks in 2019, which I felt like was a good result for them considering how expensive these trucks are. Yeah. And it's a probably a good result, but when you compare it to even Ford, which came, you know, kind of with a mildly lukewarm, warmed over Ranger from Europe. And I think they sold what 90,000 in 2019, basically doubled that, right? Yeah, but like 75,000 or something like that, yeah. Right, it was, it was, you know, significantly more. I mean, look, I think what the Gladiator diesel has going for it is wait a little bit, it'll be the only diesel on the market, right? We, we, we think that what's going to happen is that Chevy's going to go away from their little baby Duramax in the Colorado and GMC because they basically sold the factory that makes it to the Chinese. Uh, and so um, the best guess right now is 
that the new Colorado GMC won't be available with that uh, little baby Duramax anymore. So that would mean that, that the Gladiator will be the only midsize truck with a diesel option, at least in yep. America. I know you in guys in Europe get a lot of different diesels. We don't get those. <laughs> right. Yeah, in, in a couple of years, that may be true. Should we move on to number four on our list? Yeah, four, four, number four is an interesting vehicle. It's basically a vehicle we've been calling the Courier until last week, where all of a sudden we started calling it the Maverick. It's, it's <laughs> that mini truck that Ford is rumored to be developing that slots in under the Ranger. So, Steve, tell us about the Maverick. What the heck is this thing? So, yeah, once again, uh, almost like the Hyundai, but it actually sounds like it'll be smaller, real compact pickup. The Maverick is going to be a, a car-based Ford pickup truck. Um, the, the platform, the rumors have gone kind of back and forth on what it'll be based on, but it sounds like it'll be based on the same platform as the Bronco Sport, which is also the Ford Escape, and then I think uh, maybe a Lincoln vehicle or, or another crossover as well. Um, and it's, yeah, it's going to be just a, a small crossover pickup truck. Uh, I think it's awesome that Ford is getting into this market as well. And once again, if there's a company that's going to take a risk, it's going to be Ford. And Ford also said they're going to stop making cars. So why not start making small pickups too to fill in that, that gap of uh, that's going to be left behind by their small cars going away. But I, I want to I wanna toot our own horn a little bit. And I want to thank, we had an anonymous source yeah. right, that's, that sent us this uh, basically three-dimensional uh, rendering of the tailgate. Uh, on this Maverick, and uh, we were the first ones with the story. So, so I really appreciate the source, and I really appreciate that, Stephen. You broke the story. Is, yeah, is man, I was happy to do so. Is there room in the marketplace, Andre, for a compact pickup? Is this something people want? I mean, this is a city dweller pickup, right? Most pickups are sold in Texas. One out of four. You think the, you think the guys down there and the gals down there are going to cotton to this little <laughs> tiny ass uh, Ford running around? <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if the guys in Gallus and gals in Dallas and the rest of Texas uh, will go for the Maverick uh, because they can drive their F-150s, right? And their Super Duties, uh, which they love. But I think there's still room because what's happening is uh, mid-size trucks are getting a little bit bigger and bigger. Uh, we all know this. Even the Ranger has a pretty deep bed, right? So you have to, you know, for a shorter stature, stature person, it's kind of hard to reach in um, into some of those trucks and uh, having a smaller vehicle that's more compact, more fuel efficient, I, I think it's really great. Um, and the fact that it may be kind of square and butch, I think that would help, I think, the, the, the sales of this thing. I don't know. We're all big guys, you know, Steve. And, uh, you know, I love what I love. I think most of our pickup trucks is that they're the ultimate road trip vehicle because I just fit so well in them. And wh yeah. when we start getting into the midsize truck, I start getting a little uncomfortable, especially in like uh, actually the glad gladiator is really tight because I can't get the seat far enough back. Um, so what's going to happen when, when, you know, me, all of three of us are going to have to squeeze into a Maverick, which is going to be even smaller. It, it won't go well. <laughs> it won't go well. Yeah. But you know what? You're absolutely right. Uh, and I think it's a narrative. We talk about a lot how the pickup truck, especially in America, has become the family vehicle. Like it's become the number one family vehicle at home. And I recently did that video on midsize pickups with, with babies because I got a couple babies. And I can't imagine having a vehicle smaller than a midsizer. Even a midsizer with two kids is pretty tight. Like a half ton crew cab these days is almost, it almost feels necessary to have your family in. Um, so if Ford's going after that family market. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure they're going to really get any takers. Yeah. I think put the, put the surfboard back there, uh, take it, you know, to Redondo beach. Uh, but as, you know, as a, as a, as a truck that's used the way that typical trucks are used right now, it's going to be a tough sell, I think. Yeah, but I think the price will be important. Mm -hmm. If they can make this thing start at under $20,000, which yeah. they might be able to do somehow, uh, because look, at um, the Ranger starts at what, 25 grand? Um, other, you know, F-150 starts at 28 and change and on and on and on. I mean, F-150, you can, they go up to like 70,000 bucks and more for a Raptor. So I think if you can get the value down, um, to a lower entry price, I think that's going to be important. All right. Well, let's go to a truck that is actually coming, and we know a lot about it. And a lot of these trucks are probably a year or two years out. But the next one is hopefully going to be here by the end of the year. And I'm talking about the new Frontier. We know what the power plant is, Andre, and we know what the transmission is because we've been driving it. 
Heck yeah. Um, basically what happened for 2020, uh, they took the old truck, the old Frontier, mm -hmm. and they stuffed a brand new heart into it, uh, which is now the 3.8 liter uh, normally aspirated, naturally aspirated V6. Uh, it's the most powerful engine in the midsize segment on horsepower, 310 horses um, and 281 pound-feet of torque. It's a nine-speed now. So they got rid of their old five-speed. The manual transmission is now gone, unfortunately, from the Frontier. Uh, the four-cylinder engine is gone. Um, the old V6 is gone. But they're, they're going to use the same engine and transmission in their new truck. And I don't quite know exactly what it will look like. Uh, people are saying it will be not changed much as far as like looks are concerned, but it will have all the latest technology, which it needs. Yeah. Um, have you driven the new Frontier yet, Steve? Have you had it up there in uh, Canada? Uh, no, I've not had the new Frontier yet. I, I was the, recently still in a, a last-gen Frontier or the Frontier with the a last engine in it, but not with the new heart yet, no. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you got to admit it's a weird strategy to roll out a new engine and transmission but not a new truck. And i, I got to tell you, I, I don't think it helps sales much because, you know, as much as you have a, a new powertrain under the skin, people are still looking at the same switch gear. They're looking at the same design that's now 15 years old. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I don't I know, know why personally, they do that. If I really wanted a Frontier and I knew, I heard about the strategy, I would just wait. <laughs> you know, like, I, I guess if you really want the engine, but I just don't see why you wouldn't wait. Now, however, I did read a report that said that the price on the Frontier is probably expected to, to jump up quite a bit. So that might be a reason why you jump in today is to, you know, hopefully get a cheaper truck. But of course, we can't confirm that. Of, well, of course, there could also be a strategy by the manufacturer, right? <laughs> Fair, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the main reason for the price jumping is because they're consolidating their powertrain choices, right? It used to be they had the 2.5 liter base four-cylinder. Remember, Roman? We had that little um, extended cab, king cab, uh, two-wheel drive. That was like a $19,000 truck, and it had a little, you know, four-banger and a five-speed manual, but they're getting rid of it. So the price oh, has to go up yeah. because that, that engine is no longer there. All right, let's move on to the most popular midsize truck in America. Uh, it's also getting kind of long in the tooth. So what can you tell me about the new Tacoma, Steve? The Tundra. Oh, the oh, new Tundra, yeah. sorry, not the Tundra. I, 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 my brain is Toyota and automatically went to the Tacoma <laughs> because the Tundra <laughs> has, has been around for so long. It's such an old truck. So the, the Tundra, is supposed to, the new one was, we thought was going to come out in uh, Chicago yeah. this year, the Chicago Auto Show, and it didn't. <laughs> I do feel like we've been hearing about a redesigned Tundra for a long time now, too, and rumors about what's going to come to the Tundra. And, uh, I mean, I guess the quickest roundup is a uh, hybrid. Sounds like it's maybe coming to the Tundra. And then diesel was the rumor for a while, but I kind of feel like that's gone away. It sounds like a uh, Tundra hybrid is going to be the way they're, they're going to go. At least that's what I think. Yeah, the, the strongest information we have about the Tundra, and Toyota has been very hush-hush about this. I mean, they're very... Um, they're still developing the truck, um, mm -hmm. is that they're going to be going with a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. And it sounds like deja vu because that sounds like exactly what the F-150 has and had for several years. But they've also been working on this twin turbo engine. It's in currently in their Lexus cars. Um, and it's proving to be powerful, you know, and very... Um, I don't know exactly how durable it is, but Toyota is always has an eye for durability, reliability. So I'm sure that's why they're kind of holding this new truck till the end of next year is when it's supposed to come out, end of 2021. Um, but we do know that they uh, w should offer more options like a crew cap with a longer bed. They don't have that available right now. Um, and maybe a tougher truck, maybe a truck that can have more payload, uh, just more towing. Yeah, what do you think of the uh, hybrid? Will there be a hybrid? I mean, Toyota has the original hybrid, Steve, so I can't, I can't imagine not having a hybrid Toyota in the next generation Tundra. Yeah, they're the right brand to do it. Uh, my question is just why is it taken all so long? You know, I feel like we should have had all this stuff a little while ago. And, and, and whether or not, you know, maybe it's a bit of a struggle from, you know, between Toyota Japan and Toyota North America, where they're just not really backing the Tundra. I, that, that's kind of what I've always got that sense. Um, but yeah, I just, I think the hybrid will be excellent. I think twin turbo Tundra sounds amazing. I just wish it was here already. 
Is the VA going to stay, Andre, or is that gone? Well, all, currently all information we have points against it. It, it points against uh, the V8 staying. And um, I know a couple of guys has emailed us and said, well, what about, what about other V8 options that uh, Toyota has? But um, actually there's some news coming out of Australia because there's also gonna be a redesigned Land Cruiser, all right? And also um, a couple of years down the road after the Tundra, there should be a new Forerunner and a new Tacoma still coming and they should all be sharing the same chassis or platform um, and they're all being designed at the same time which is kind of crazy and exciting at the same time uh, so i don't think v8 will stay because of just fuel efficiency regulations right uh, going forward and if they can make crazy power with those turbo engines uh, why not all right, and now our number one truck, but not our last truck because there's a bunch more, but our number one, because we get a bunch of bonuses, our number one truck, of course, has to be the one that's probably going to be here the soonest. It was supposed to be perhaps unveiled already because of the coronavirus. It didn't happen, but we're talking about, of course, the Ram TRX, and what that is, what that is special is because um, it's going to have a detuned, we're thinking, Hellcat motor in it, so a Hellcat truck. Uh, that actually, after, what is it now, 10 years, 10, maybe 11 years by the time it reaches production, will compete against the Ford Raptor. So a true and honest Raptor competitor, perhaps a Raptor killer, uh, taking on the Raptor at its own game. Uh, and that is going to be uh, an interesting uh, truck. So when is it coming, Andre? Well, um, the latest info said that it should be unveiled in June at the Detroit Auto Show. Detroit Auto Show is canceled. Um, so now we're maybe looking at the end of June for a debut, um, maybe a little bit later. So we'll have to wait and see, but it should be coming this year. But that's another one of those trucks that have been rumored, what, for five years or however many years. Yeah, we saw a concept uh, Steven, a few years Steven, ago. Steven, what's your take on that? I mean, I'm so excited for it, of course. I mean, you got to Hellcat all the things. That's FCA strategy, it seems. And they're working their way through the lineup, so the Ram is just next. Uh, and, and you know what? If they – the engine's great. Hellcat's amazing. We know that. Horsepower is great. The, the bigger thing in my head is going to be the suspension. What's underneath that truck uh, and, and just how fast can it really fly through? Whoops, right? That's what we love the Raptor for, and that's what it's known for. And that's what we need to know. But, but if it does have that Hellcat, I mean, we know it's going to absolutely rip. Like what a just a yeah. what a great choice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the modern the day SRT10. The Hellcat engine in in the Charger and Challenger puts out 717 horsepower right now. Um, you know, we're expecting it to be down a little bit uh, in uh, the TRX. Uh, why I don't know, but that's been the rumor. You know, they did roll one out out at the State Fair of Texas based on the previous generation Ram, yeah. uh, and so uh, you know, it's it's a truck that. Um, we want to buy, you know, how could you not want to buy the, what, what should be the most, you know, let, let, what the Raptors at what, 550 Andre horsepower. So this, this thing should be at least what, 600? Yeah. Well, be? current Raptor is at 450 Yeah, uh, and it's a twin turbo and there's rumors that Ford will stuff, you know, a supercharged V8 into the Raptor in order to fight the TRX. Um, I don't have any, you know, solid information to back it up, but you know, the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee Trackhawk has 707 horsepower, and they had to beef up the all-wheel drive system and the transmission and every component possible to support yeah. it. But now the truck is heavier, right? So I don't know if they can make a full 707 horsepower or whatever, 700 plus, but 600 plus would be plenty. You know, that would be... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be plenty of power. And may, maybe, you know, and what is it in the Hellcat? It's like 600 pound foot of torque, right? Something like that, if I recall. Uh, and maybe that's why uh, GM is saying that the uh, uh, Hummer is going to have 11,000. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting ahead of them. They're making sure yeah. they know. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here, here. Quick, quick guess. Okay. Here, here. First, guess, the, guess how many horsepower, guess zero to 60, and give me the towing on the TRX. This is a guess, so we're just going to guess. And I'll, okay. I'll, start, I'll start, okay? okay. I'm going to go um, 600 horsepower. Okay. All right. Zero to 60 in uh, six seconds. Okay. All right. Which is fast for a truck. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, and towing will be, let's go, uh, the, the Raptors at like 8,000-ish, right, Andre? So I'm going to go, yeah. it's going to have to go more than that, 9,000. That, that's my guess. What's your guess, Andre? So I'm going to go with more, more, more. Uh, I'm going to say about 650 horse. Yeah. Um, it, and by the way, uh, we broke a couple of stories recently on the TRX. First, it'll have different driving modes. No, wait, don't, for, hey, don't go there. Finish your guess. No, you no, no. It, it's important. It's important. Anyway, 650 horsepower, okay, maybe okay. a demon mode, which will give it more power <laughs> on tap for a nice. short period of time. And then um, towing uh, acceleration zero to sixty five seconds, okay five second acceleration time. Yeah, and then um, towing. Oh gosh, it's not it's not meant for towing. I would say eight thousand. <laughs> All right, how about you, Steve? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go horsepower. And if the Ram PR folks are listening, feel free to take this idea. Horsepower, six hundred and sixty six horsepower. It has to be right. <laughs> uh, and then if we're going for zero to sixty. Let's call it five and a half seconds. I'll cut the difference between both you guys, 5.5. Uh, and then towing, I mean, it's got to be Raptor competitive, maybe a little more. So let's call it 9,000 pounds. I think that's a solid guess. All right. All right. I, I love that 666, the mark of the beast. <laughs> exactly. But, like I said, Demon mode, 666? Come on. It's perfect. But, like I said, most of those most trucks are sold in Texas. I just can't see you bringing the uh, mark <laughs> of Satan home. <laughs> Or to church your wife. on Sunday. <laughs> Taking it to church. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. Andre. What stories did we break? We broke everything. <laughs> uh, so it's going to have, apparently, according to this information and the image we received of the dash and of the controls, it'll have launch control mode. So very similar to the Jeep Grand Cherokee and other um, SRT and Hellcat vehicles from, from FCA. Um, it'll have different drive modes. We don't know what all the modes are, but we can see on the dashboard that the shocks might be adjustable via the switch. So which nice. means it could be a kind of a live setup similar to a Raptor. Um, it, and, and then the rumor is that it's not gonna be Fox. The rumor is it's gonna have the latest uh, Bill Steen or Bill Stein uh, shocks, but adjustable and remote reservoir as well. Um, and uh, what else did we break? Um, we break the price. That's the one. <laughs> no, that and that's an issue. Bank? That that could be an issue, right? Yeah. I mean, if the truck is eighty grand or more, um, it's going to be kind of hard to sell a lot of these. Yeah, yeah I don't think so. Ram doesn't do eighty grand um, Hellcats. They don't do eighty. You know, you can get a Hellcat for like fifty nine starting. So, I mean, if any company is going to come in and do you know a vehicle that's affordable, it'll be Ram at least uh, a year from after it launches. There'll be a launch edition that might be crazy expensive, right? For all the guys and gals who want the first one. But at some point, uh, Ram is the one company, FCA is the one company that understands they don't make money by not selling trucks. So, yeah. um, and they already have, I'm sure the tooling for that Hellcat engine paid for, right? It's been around now for a long time. Uh, and they have the chassis, right? So, totally. so basically what we're looking at are putting an existing engine into a chassis that they have and beefing up the shocks um and adding some you know bits and pieces to make it off-roading i'm crossing my fingers yes all right we've gotten to the bottom of the list boys and now it's time to talk about uh, perhaps the most talked about trucks in all the land and uh, we're, we're looking at two bonuses andre uh first let's talk about the rivian and then of course we can't ignore the cyber truck because nobody in this right mind has ignored the cyber truck <laughs> because it's in the news all the time yeah so Tell, tell us what we know about the Rivian, Andre. When is it coming? What, how, how many millions of pound foot of torque will it have? And how does it do a tank turn? <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be cool. So, the, so they were hoping initially before the virus hit to un, uh, re, release the first production truck this year, 2020. Uh, because of the shutdowns and the factory slowdowns, um, they're saying early 2021. So it's at least a couple months delayed. Um, okay, that's understandable. Everybody's delayed. That's okay. Um, but they're still building out a factory, which is a big task, right? And it's supposed to have, you know, 12 million pound feet of torque. Well, no, actually, what, what is it? Uh, 12,000 or 11,000. Um, but it can, it should be able to do a tank turn. And we have a argument about this, right, Roman? I mean, um, I, I say it's kind of cool and interesting and useful. And you say it's just uh, a party trick that um, will tear your truck up to pieces. 
<laughs> is that what true? What do you think, Steven? Uh, so, Steven, so I think it's you... both. Let, let me tell you why it's both. So the tank turn, when you're sitting there stationary going in circles, is a total party trick. Like, it's just to show off to your friends. I actually think it could be dangerous too. If you get going fast enough and then get a little bit out around, I feel like you could maybe roll your vehicle that way too. But picture this now, you're on a rocky trail, you're coming up the trail and you're on a bad line. Suddenly you can actually just pivot your vehicle, right? On the spot and then keep going on a different line. That is an incredible usage case, which, which tank turn could actually enable because you can get you know, your vehicles to turn, or sorry, your wheels to turn in different directions. So uh, I think there's actually yeah a couple different maybe specific usage cases usage cases but uh, I think it could actually be really cool for off roading. All right, so let, let me let me be a little bit of a Debbie Downer here, <laughs> just okay. because. Well, I have to be. Um, okay. So you know, I mean, there's been so much excitement. So Amazon invested in Rivian, Ford invested in Rivian. You know, they came out of basically nowhere to become uh, b before the Cybertruck to become the electric truck poster child. But there are a lot of real hurdles that they have yet to um, jump, right? And, and the most yeah. biggest one of those is the fact that they have a factory, but it's not built out. So while we're talking about these trucks and while they're out there showing all this video and it's doing tank turns and it's at all the truck shows, they don't have a factory to build it yet. Uh, at least they don't have a built out factory. The other thing they don't have is a dealer network, nor do they have a charging network. Uh, and those are three really big things that you need to be successful at building and selling trucks, like a factory that builds them, a dealership network, or some kind of a, a service network that fixes them. Yeah. Uh, and of course, a charging network that charges them. Now for the charging network, you can use Electrify America, I guess, or you could use your garage, but it's not ideal, especially when you're competing with the last truck on our list, the Typer truck. What are your thoughts on that, Andre? Is this, how real is this truck? I mean, you know, everybody's like, hey, I'm going to go buy a Rivian or I put two and a half thousand dollars down on a Rivian. That's grand. But when will we actually like, like be able to buy one in a way that you could go buy an F-150 or a Chevy Silverado or a Ram at your local dealership, right? I can go buy one now and come home with one. Rivian, I don't know. Yeah. Right. There are a lot of questions still. Uh, I think they're trying to address all of them. Uh, and I think they're kind of maybe using a similar like a Tesla model, right? Where they will, will, they will try to sell direct probably without like a franchise dealership network. Um, they also talked about white glove service, which kind of means, uh, well, first of all, the truck will be internet linked. So in theory, you could send out updates to it or read, you know, what's wrong with it. And then somebody will come to your house and they'll either take it away or they'll fix it um, in your driveway. Um, so they're talking about all these different um, things, how to charge them. Uh, Electrify America, as we found out recently, <laughs> it's not very reliable char charging, you know, as far as how do you pay for it, you know, which one, which chargers are working, which ones are broken. Um, so it's not very easy. And I, I think, yeah, that's going to be a hurdle for them to jump through. Um, but there's still a lot of people excited, uh, excited by this truck. How much is it going to cost? I mean, they've taken the rest. I know our friend Alex put down, what, $2,500 on one like a year ago. They're supposed to be in the $60,000 range to start. But as with everything, the initial ones will be more expensive, right? So I think they're going to roll out the truck with a lot of options. And that may be seventy or $80,000 truck. And then slowly build a more basic one for around sixty. That's before tax incentives, right? And I think um, I think yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but but I think we also have to talk about Tesla in this space. Wait, wait, before we go to Tesla, because I want to say that for last, let's talk about numbers. I think they're talking about a four hundred mile range, uh, yeah. which is a big ass battery pack, right? Yeah. Um, and a, so here's here's a conundrum with electric pickup trucks. If you want to use a pickup truck as more than just a mode of transportation, right? Just going back and forth. If you want to use it as a truck, you need a couple things. You need uh, range for towing because you don't want to, you know, uh, be stuck on the highway filling up and you need payload. Uh, and both of those are potentially problematic for electric pickup trucks because your payload's taken up by the battery weight. So the more batteries you put in it, the less payload you have. Uh, and then if you're actually towing or, you know, have a lot of weight on the thing, you're using a lot of electricity, which means you're having to recharge it and recharging time becomes a huge issue because unlike, let's say a Tesla where you're, 
and I'm not talking about the pickup truck where you're just driving and you're not towing or you're not hauling, you can just kind of top off and keep going and top off. But when you're using 100% more power towing, then you have to fill from empty to full every time. And then it becomes very arduous uh, to cross the country every time you have to stop for an hour to fill up the truck with, and that's being generous an hour. I mean, it could take potentially longer. So we don't know how Rivian's gonna overcome those issues. And we certainly don't know how Tesla's gonna overcome those issues. But let's get to your truck, Andre, uh, the Tesla. Steve, what do you think of the design? That's the thing that broke the internet. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think you just said it right there. That's exactly why it looked like it did. It broke the internet. Uh, my guess, my hunch is the production Cybertruck won't look like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Elon will prove me wrong. But I, I just think that uh, coming up, we're going to see a whole new Cybertruck that's like, hey, by the way, this is what it'll actually look like. Maybe it'll be similar to that. But and, and if you want my opinion, I mean, I think it's stupid. I hate it. I cannot stand it. I hope they don't build that truck. That's my <laughs> unvarnished truth. <laughs> so, Andre, what's, what's, your, what's your take on the design? Oh, so the latest uh, rumor or information, and Elon keeps tweeting uh, every day, of course. Of course. Uh, but the latest info we have is that they're adjusting some of the lines. So the, I think they brought the belt line and created more glass space. I don't know. It's still, so when you have a triangle as a truck, <laughs> uh, a you know, it's hard to reach into the bed. It's hard to you know, do the things that you want to do with a truck. We talked about the gooseneck trailer towing, right? Yeah. So how are you supposed to put a trailer up there if it's going to start hitting the bed when you turn? You know, how, how are you supposed to do that? So it's weird. But as far as all the electric trucks are concerned, uh, I would put my money, as far as making it to production and making it viable, I would start with General Motors. I think they've done a lot of work and they're actually using a new battery chemistry, right? So, so they're not using lithium ion for their battery system. They've developed um, a different system using nickel, magnesium, cobalt, and aluminum. I mean, this is crazy stuff. And it's supposed to be chargeable easily. It's supposed to be you know, easy to manufacture, easy to recycle. Um, so... So I think General Motors has the best chance, and I think Ford, to some extent, also has the capability to build a very viable electric truck. And then like companies like Rivian and Tesla, um, I mean, yes, a lot of people trust Tesla because they've delivered several vehicles, but their quality is not so great, right? Yeah. Looking at the recent Model Y, uh, right, Roman? I mean, they have paint issues, they have you know, component fitment issues. Um, but the truck, the, the bar of entry is so high, right? If you look at an F-150 and the Ram and the Toyota and everything else, the quality has to be there. The durability has to be there. Yeah. You know, the driving range has to be there. The bar is so high that, you know, well, Rivian and Tesla have a, have a long way to go. There's like two different worlds here that are like banging heads, right? So there's this you know, Tesla fanboy and girl world, right, that, that um, loves the truck and, and is over the moon about it. I was there when they unveiled it. Uh, and, you know, I heard comments from people like, Elon, have my baby. Elon, be my dad. You know, I mean, this is, you yeah. know, this is like cult of personality stuff. So, so there's that, there's, you know, and, and, you know, he's just created the greatest vehicle ever in the, in the, and this is what they believe, right? This is, I'm not saying this is hyperbole. It's the truth because I heard it there. And then there's like the typical truck uh, guy and gal who are, who's buying the F-150 or Silverado or Ram or whatever right now, right? Where they're using it either as a family vehicle or as a, um, as a um, you know, work truck. And those two worlds are, are definitely clashing when it comes to, to the cyber truck. And the one thing, you know, I got to ride in the truck when they unveiled it. Um, and I, I was very grateful to be there because, you know, it, it, it usually we're on the other, in the other world. So it was good to see a glimpse into the Tesla world and we own a Tesla. So let's, let's be clear about that. You know, we, we want to cover everybody fairly. So, you know, we're doing our best to cover electric cars and trucks. Uh, but the one sense I got for it was that it's definitely a HD trucks and, and, and those guys have no concept, you know, to them a Tacoma and a, and a 3,500 is the same. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely, you know, an HD truck, which gives it a lot more flexibility in terms of the regulations. Uh, but as an HD truck, it's big. I mean, it's got the footprint of an F-150, but it feels like it's twice as big. And, 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 and it, 
my sense is that a lot of these guys are like and gals are lifestyle buyers. And once they actually have to live with a full size pickup truck in LA or in New York, they're going to find that it, it's whether the design is great, forget everything else. It's just the size of the thing is yeah. not going to, not going to live well in a major city where a lot of these people live. Right. It's just not. Yeah. It's a it's great point. Too big. It, 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 absolutely. And everyone complains about big trucks. And when we do talk about lifestyle pickups, they're almost always small trucks. You're absolutely right about that. And I just wanted to touch on, you talked about production a little bit earlier. I do think that's the biggest hurdle for Rivian. I mean, don't forget Elon tweeted when he was in production hell, like he talked about how production for him, was one of the hardest possible processes to go through. And I think, yeah, until Rivian can prove that they can produce a vehicle uh, en masse, you know, we kind of, they're just still, they're still selling vaporware, really. Yeah, and, and Andre, let, let's just touch upon the other trucks just so people feel like we're not ignoring them. So there's a lot of other electric truck companies and let's pick four more that we can talk about. Uh, there is Atlas, uh, which at least in my mind, you know, is just, a battery technology company at this point they don't even have a rolling chassis so i know they have a concept for a truck but it doesn't exist uh, the one that's probably the closest to production is either a bollinger or um or oh god what's it what's the there's, company there's also lordstown yeah lordstown yeah that's yeah, a lordstown. lordstown so bollinger and lordstown and then of course work workhorse, workhorse. right um those there are four other companies, uh, but they just seem to be very small in terms of their capitalization right now. To bring a new vehicle to market, you don't need millions of dollars. You probably need hundreds of millions or billions. And, and I don't think any of those four companies are at the level where they can actually bring a, a, a serious um, national truck out yet. That's why we're not talking about them. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think Bollinger, you know, to your point, has already made their prices available. And that kind of proves your point. The, the truck's going to be 125 grand. Uh, you know, it looks amazing. It looks super cool. It has a crazy functionality. But at 125K, it's, it's not a mass market vehicle by any means. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I agree with you 100%, Steven. Uh, amazing truck, the Bollinger. It has classic styling, uh, really great capability, uh, really small range. They're saying 200 miles with no payload, right? I mean, that's basically what they're kind of quoting about 210 miles. Um, what I think, oh, here's what should happen, Roman. Ooh, um, sorry, I got excited. <laughs> uh, uh, the um, Atlas should, because they're touting their battery technology, right? How it's gonna be super quick to charge, it will have crazy good range. They should throw their battery inside of a Bollinger. So now you have an off-road truck, a proper truck with huge range and it's easy to charge and all this stuff. Uh, so that's going to be great. On the other side, there's Lordstown, uh, which actually appears to have a lot of backing also as far as capital. And they're doing something that nobody else is doing. They're putting their motors in the hubs. So the Rivian has four motors, but they're inboard. Um, so each wheel has its own motor but they're using drive shafts to connect the motors to the wheels. That's why it can do a tank turn uh, because they have four separate motors. Uh, the Lordstown should have four separate motors, but they're inside the hubs. And that's really interesting technology that not many other people are looking into. Yeah. And they're basically gonna use what looks like a GM chassis, a Silverado with hub motors to build their Lordstown truck. Um, so that's, uh, you know, they, they they also have a factory that they're retooling. So who knows? All right. So let's go down this list and talk about, you know, trucks that are, we're probably going to see this year, right. That we can actually like physically touch and see. Um, so I'll go down the list. You tell me if it's going to be unveiled and if it's going to be like touchable, not like vapor wearable. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, F-150 Andre, are we going to see it this year? Yes. Touchable. Okay, Steve, Hummer EV, are we going to see it this year? I kind of doubt it, even though I think they're on track and they were on track to show it, I, I kind of doubt it based on what's going on. Well, actually, right. let me, let, let's reflect, re, re, raise. Uh, touchable is one thing at the show, but also in production. And I think F-150 will be both. We will True. see it and it will be at a dealer this Great year. Great point. We'll probably see the Hummer. I don't think we'll touch the Hummer this year. Okay. How about the Santa Cruz? Product, producible and touchable. In other words, can we buy it? What I mean by touchable, can we buy it? Probably yeah. not. Uh, no, I don't think so. 
I don't think so, but I hope so. All right. The next one for sure is producible and viable. The Gladiator, right? That's going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah that's they, they said that a hundred times. Okay. Ford Maverick. No. No. Nissan Frontier. I think it will be debuted, touchable, but I don't think it will be at the dealer this year. Okay. How about the Tundra, the new Tundra? No. I doubt it too. Yeah, no way. No. All right. Ram TRX. Yes and yes. Okay. And then the last two, the Rivian and, of course, the Cybertruck. Nope and nope. No and nope. Okay. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Those are the trucks that we're most excited to drive. And I got to say, for me, I'm probably the most excited to drive um, the TRX just because I think it's the most complete. I think it's actually sitting someplace in a Detroit garage um, just waiting to be unveiled by <laughs> FCA. I think it's actually a real thing. It's just we're waiting for this this moment to, to pass. Yeah. It's like the beast, the... 666 that's trying to rip its way <laughs> out. How about you, Andre? What are you the most excited about? Which one of those? Oh, well, you, you, took my, you took my thing. You, you can say it too. It doesn't matter. There's no rules here. <laughs> no, the TRX, dude. The, the suspension, the prototype we saw and the suspension on this thing uh, and the power. What, how can you go wrong with yeah. that? And how about you, Steve? Well, I won't say TRX, and you guys are going to hate me, but uh, it's the Maverick. Like, I'm super what? curious to see what the heck Ford can do with a compact pickup truck. Really, like, I have just no idea what it'll be. And, you know, maybe that's not excited, but that's the most curious. The truck I'm most curious about is for sure that Maverick. But, yeah, TRX, oh, my gosh. I cannot wait to jump that truck. <laughs> in, in a way, you're right. I mean, the TR. look, uh, the Maverick is actually, you know, a whole new segment of truck that we haven't yeah. seen in a long time, right? Um, Everything else is kind of, you know, a segment that's already been and done, whereas this is something that's, that's you know, even the Cybertruck, whether it's a heavy-duty or full-size truck, it's a segment that exists. Whereas yeah. the Maverick, you know, since, since Toyota and Nissan came out with their little mini trucks, what was that, 30 years ago, we haven't seen those little compact trucks around. Exactly. Uh, so, so it is cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see what they do. And don't forget about the Subaru Baja. Ever since that went away, they left a big hole in the market. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Are they gonna so put, there's, are, there's a lot to seats be... in the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> there's a lot to be hopeful for. Yeah, absolutely. There is really cool trucks coming. All right, guys. Well, thank you for spending uh, you know this time with us talking about uh, our uh, favorite upcoming trucks. Uh, as always, uh, head on back to TFL Truck uh, for more news, use, and what else, boys? Real world reviews. Exactly. Yes. And don't yeah. forget to visit Steve at TFL Off-Road, uh, where uh, he's busy every day coming up with cool off-road trucks, side-by-sides, ATVs, Jeeps. Deuce, deuce and a half. Deuce and a half. <laughs> Whatever you got. <laughs> All kinds of cool stuff. And, of course, Andre's over at TFL Now, uh, very busy with the latest and greatest breaking news. Uh, so the second – by the way, guys, we get a lot of emails asking us, uh, you know, really – interesting questions that we don't know the answers to because if we know the answer we work really really hard to publish it either to tfl truck or to one of our youtube channels there's yeah. nothing that we know that we're like hey did you hear steve and don't tell anybody that's <laughs> not our business our business is the opposite yes <laughs> and also uh roman uh, you are talking to ryan from johnson auto plaza is that right i hope so yeah we're gonna be, uh, be talking about uh, what it's like to be a dealer uh, in this time and what trucks he's most interested in seeing and what trucks he thinks will actually sell. I mean, that's a whole other conversation we never got into. Which of these trucks will actually sell and which will be, uh, you know, sitting at the dealership collecting deep discounts. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Ciao. Right. Take care, guys. Okay, bye.